What's up guys, in today's episode I'm going to be talking about how mechanics get paid and how much money you can make as a mechanic, so stay tuned. Yo, 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 what is up guys? Nick Nikai here, Let's Drift Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, first off, thank you guys all so much for sending your condolences and prayers my way my last video. Really appreciate that. And I really appreciate all the love from you guys, really. That's freaking badass. Um, so today's episode, I'm gonna basically be talking about how flat rate mechanics, as far as working in a dealership, uh, get paid and how the pay system and everything works from my experience working in a couple dealerships around Southern California. So anyways, getting back to the video, how do mechanics get paid? Um, pretty much the way it's set up, uh, I used to say commission pay before because that's like the kind of the way I saw it, but really it's not commission, it's really uh, hourly pay plus a bonus. But it kind of still feels like a commission to me, but anyways. So basically, anywhere you work in Southern California, if you provide your own tools, you get paid double minimum wage. So right now, that's like 26 an hour. So if you're a flat rate tech in a dealership, um, 26 bucks an hour. Say you clock in for eight hours a day, you work an 80 hour pay period, 26 times 80, that's about 2,080 bucks. Um, not take home, of course, but pre-tax, so 2,000 every two weeks, four grand a month. That's just doing the bare minimum um, because that's just getting paid for your clock in time. So what's really nice about being a tech in the industry is we're flat rates. So say for example, you get a job, it's a 2002, I use brakes a lot because it's like one of the easiest analogies, but 2002 Toyota Corolla. You get a front brake job, replace pads and turn rotors. That job um, pays two hours book time. Every single job on a car Pay, has a book time set like an all data or that the manufacturer specifies that that job pays so like whether it's replacing a radio knob on a certain car the book time will be like 0.3 or 0.4 whether to like doing a complete engine swap or a transmission swap engine swap maybe like 15 hours book time so that's the set rate that the technician is going to get paid and that's the set rate that the dealership charges times their labor rate per hour so as a technician, the job's gonna pay, say, brake jobs, two hours. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to complete that job. It could be 30 minutes, or it could be two hours, or even three hours if something goes wrong. Um, you're gonna get paid that two hours for that job, and same for any other job. Um, I'm talking about just straight R&R &R replacing parts. When it comes to like diagnosing, they have set labor times for like diagnosing a check engine light or diagnosing an airbag light but everything has a set time that the job pays. So that's why I say it's really nice to be a tech because a job like the brake job could pay two hours, but if you're an experienced mechanic and you have the right tools and knowledge, you could smack that brake job out in like 30 minutes maybe and still get paid for that, that two hour job. So you technically you work 30 minutes, but you got paid two hours and then you got on to the next job. So it's like another maybe one hour job and it takes you 30 minutes you spend an hour working and you've already made three hours worth of work. So that's really freaking sick because it changes the whole game from just going to work and being lazy or being a hustler. Because at like say any other job where it's just hourly or salary, uh, it doesn't matter how bad you hustle or how much you bust your ass off because you have your set pay and you're going to get that set pay no matter how hard you work, no matter how many cars you work on or how many Whatever you do, how many things you do at your work, you're gonna get paid that same amount. I hope I explained how the flat, flat, flat rate system works to the best of my lo knowledge. Um, stuttering now, a little rusty on the YouTube, sorry guys. Okay, so now you guys understand kind of how it works. Let me give you a real life scenario so you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. So say you just come to work every day for eight hours, you do 80 hours clocked in, and you don't really even flag eight hours. It doesn't matter, uh, where I, at least where all the dealerships I've been at, they're gonna pay you your 80 hours for being clocked in times 26. So you go around and just hang out, chill out, and be lazy at work, and still take home 2,000 every paycheck, before taxes, keep in mind. 
So really that's gonna be like maybe like 1500 or 1400 bucks every two weeks. So if you're cool with that, that's cool, but I'm not so, and most people I know are not cool with that. So um, let's say you have that same technician just doing the 80 hours working. So say you have another technician and he's punched in for the same 80 hours he's there from eight to five every day, working the same amount of hours as the other guy, but this guy is busting his ass. He knows what he's doing. He's uh, got a lot of skill and experience and he's just a born hustler and he really wants it. So he's gonna be making f or flagging one, a lot more hours than the other guy. So say the hustler goes in and flags 120 hours for that two week pay period. He's gonna get his 120 hours times whatever his pay rate is, say $26 an hour, and I wrote that down right here, is $31.20. So the guy who flagged 100 hours is gonna have $31.20 for a paycheck. The guy who just came in and did whatever, he's gonna have around $2,080 for a paycheck. So which one would you rather be? Would you rather be up here or would you rather be down there? So that's just the basic standard at being at $26 an hour is where I'm getting these numbers from. Uh, your pay is going to vary depending on your certifications and stuff like that. So uh, as you can see, you can have the potential to make a lot of money. So there's some guys maybe making $30 an hour. Some guys at BMW you're making $37 an hour. You can imagine if you're doing $37 an hour, say doing 100 hours every pay period, that's $3,700 every two weeks. It all depends really how bad you're willing to work and how efficient you get and ultimately two would be I guess whatever your pay scale is but even being at the bare, bare minimum you can still have the opportunity to make a lot of money and it just all comes down to you and that is also just going based off on making 100 hours you can make more than 100 hours there's really no limit I've heard some guys in the dealerships making like 180 hours a pay period not every pay period but they've hit 180 hours and that's freaking insane. Like I'll kind of average 100 at BMW, but I'm still a BMW rookie. But I, there's guys at my work flagging a lot more than 100 hours, 120, 140 hour pay periods. And you can see those numbers are pretty up there. So um, yeah, that's just pretty crazy. And that's why I love being a tech in the industry, just because you kind of get to decide your own paycheck, how much you want to take home, how hard you want to work, how much money do you want to make. Um, another thing to keep in mind that I would want to throw out there would be like um, not every job is going to be like a gravy job where it's like say a break job and you can bang it out in 30 minutes. There's plenty of times I've been out there and it's like a one hour job but maybe it was my first time doing it or maybe I broke something doing that job and it turned into a two hour job or a three hour job because I didn't have the part I needed or any kind of little hiccup like that. Things can really slow you down and screw you over. So um, not every day is gonna be those 10, 12 hour days. Sometimes you might even just get five hours, but you just have to look at it in the long run because over the two weeks, if you get hit one five hour day, that's fine. You can make up for it in those next couple days. So uh, I recommend shooting for like maybe 10 hours if you're trying to hit the 100 hour mark. 10 hours flagging 10 hours a day times 10 days of work, 100 hours. And your goal should always just to be flagging more than you're clocked in because that's the key to making money in this business. And one thing too is don't take shortcuts because a lot of guys, maybe it's like a job pays a little bit and they know it's gonna take them a while so they'll cut corners, maybe break things on the way to get the job done and kind of brush it under the rug. Um, don't do that, you really don't have to. Uh, a lot of the jobs, if you work efficiently and maybe the first time I would say on a lot of jobs, you might not beat the book time. So it could be a five hour job, but if it's your first time, it's probably gonna take you a little bit longer, but that's okay. Just look at it as like an investment in your learning because the next time that job comes around, more than likely you're gonna be able to beat that book time. And the next time it comes around, you're just gonna get faster and faster, figure out better ways to do it. Um, and yeah, so. That's one little piece of advice I'd like to throw out there for you guys. So that's basically how the flat rate system works. I hope I explained it 
for you guys to understand because when I was going to school I really didn't understand like the full concept about flagging and how it works and everything so if I didn't or you're unsure about something feel free to drop a comment and I could explain further to you um, I try to stay away from like saying exact numbers that like I'm making at my work because it can get me into a lot of trouble and it has in the past so I kind of try and keep it generic or base things off Toyota so it doesn't come bite me in the ass at work but yeah really just wanted to help inform you guys and teach some of the youngsters maybe who don't really understand it or trying to get into this industry but there's definitely potential to make money um i used to think well i've always figured you can make money but a lot of people i feel like think that like mechanics only make so much money like you'll maybe make like 80 grand and like if you're lucky most guys making 60 grand but that is definitely not true you can easily clear six figures working in the dealership and that's just the dealership you also have to keep in mind that you can go to an independent shop and the pay is going to be different there different dealerships also have different pay as far as just the brand like at toyota one toyota might pay you more just because you're more skilled and they need skilled technicians or if you go to another brand like upper end bmw even up in porsche i'm sure those brands the higher you get the more pay they're paying their technicians so that's pretty cool there's a lot of options for being a technician right now in this day and age um you could even open your own shop if that's something you wanted to do and you can even go into other fields with your automotive experience i know a couple guys that well i know a couple guys that went to edison so working for the city but still in the same field but i do know a couple other people who went into aviation mechanics like working on airplane engines and like military drones and there's definitely a lot of money potential there so don't think about it like oh i'm gonna go to school and get a job and i'm gonna have to work like for a dealership for the rest of my life you never know what opportunities are going to present themselves so always keep your mind open and your head up that's all i got for you guys this week currently uh repainting the body kit on my 240 or painting it i primered it up uh getting it ready for paint i got the paint in the mail now so gonna start probably mocking up the over fenders and installing the over fenders as well uh i know i need to do a little cutting i'm not sure how exactly i'm gonna do that so uh that should be another video coming up soon as well as followed by the painting so i'm pretty excited to have my car looking like flawless because it's just gonna have no dents or anything like that for now so that'll be really fun and the turbo is still working on it um Let's see, I have the turbo right here behind me. I need to get this welded to the manifold still, and then I could slap it on and then send that EC out for the tune, ECU out for the tune once I get a couple more small things. But slow and steady, just kind of doing what I can. I'm back to working full time now since the COVID stuff kind of went down a little bit and the uh, business is picking up at work. So have a little bit less time on my hands now, but I'm trying to still do stuff here and there when I get off work and then the weekends are the days to actually put in all the work. So that's it for this episode. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace!